going on 29 years now. Um, so I've been, been there, done that with a lot of this stuff. Um, and if you have any questions about health and wellness, I look forward to answering them for you tonight. Thanks, Coach. Ms. Polis, you're up. Am I unmuted? I think I am. Hi there, I'm, I'm Kathy Polis. I'm the Cambridge ACE Program Coordinator here at O'Galley, and I have been at O'Galley since 1993. I've held a couple different roles, but for the past 17 years, been the Cambridge Coordinator. Um, I really enjoy working with our Cambridge students and assisting them with their um, plans of action, working on their strengths and their likes and getting them to where they want to be. Um, I'm blessed to have Mr. Larson as my counselor working alongside me. We work really well together and we are here to serve you. So looking forward to meeting the class of 2025. That's right, the class of 2025. Uh, for those parents out there that have kids at Johnson, uh, myself and Mr. Tackett and Ms. Gordon, two other guidance counselors were over there, gave them a little bit of a preview and sent them away with a piece of paper that had their elective choices on the backside. It was a QR code and a link for them to start choosing their electives and pointing them in direction of all the other information, which I'm gonna do shortly. And I would be remiss to uh, forget to say that I sure wish we could have had this live in our auditorium packed and having you with us. I'm glad you're here today. I hope everybody is safe. And if we get word from the district that we're able to have a proper open house with you present in front of us to tour the school a little bit, we're gonna have that scheduled as soon as possible. I'm gonna share my screen and show you where a lot of this information is, parents. This is our homepage and let me see. Hopefully you may have joined this Zoom through one of these, this one right here. So that's where our Zoom was living, our, our invitation for this Q&A. A lot, a lot, a lot of information is on this academics page right here. We're just gonna click on that tab and it's gonna take you to Welcome Commodores. This page has a lot of information right here. Every, almost everything that you would need for what is going on at O'Galley for your new student and even the old student. This one right here, this is a video. It says it's a, a, a video, an orientation video. It's a voiceover of a PowerPoint that your kids saw today at Johnson. And this one just, it's what it is. It's an orientation. Uh, overview of what goes on at O'Galley from PBIS to Anchor Hour and some of the electives along with the graduation requirements. This piece here, video is all the programs that are offered at O'Galley. And this is mainly touching on our CTE programs, our ACE program, ACE Cambridge, our AVID Health and Wellness and our Fine Arts. When I scroll down, the 2021-2022, that is next year's instructional handbook. And this has everything that you, or this has all of our courses that we will be offering next year with a brief description of it. It also lists the graduation requirements in there um, as well. Now, if you want to make sure that you are part of a program, or at least considered to be for a program, whether it is Cambridge or our aviation program or health and wellness, you are gonna be looking here. For zoned students, if you are zoned for O'Galley, this is where you're gonna click. And it takes you to a very quick and easy form to fill out, email, student, and then which one are you applying for? There is one here for health and wellness and Cambridge. We have a lot of students that choose both of those. Again, this is for zoned students. You are scheduled to go to O'Galley. If you are zoned to go for to Vieira or Mel High, 
you want to go here, this will take you to the Brevard Public Schools page to apply. There is a $30 fee for this. With the out of zoned area or the, the non zoned students, if it asks you for teacher recommendations, you can upload them right here. Or if you're at Ascension, you can do it right here. The links over here are a little more specific. We've got our AVID program with Ms. Armstrong, more information on Cambridge, our CTE programs that we have, health and wellness. We have our Fine Arts Academy and our Air Force Junior ROTC. And let's not forget this page. Parents, this is one thing that I know you don't miss. And that is all of the forms that you get to fill out every year. They are PDF. And over here, you'll see the link if you are a new Brevard student or your existing Brevard. If you've been to a school in Brevard, you would be doing this. Right now, if you're at a school in Brevard, if you are brand new, you'd be doing this one. These, again, are the forms that have to be filled out every year, no matter what school you're going to. They are fillable PDFs. And we encourage you to do that. You can print them out and then bring them to school, mail them. We do not encourage you to send them via email because you will be sending through the airwaves personal identifiable information. So that is what, again, let me see if I can get back. That is the page. And I can't, let me just stop sharing for a moment. And again, that is going to be your one stop shop under the academics page. Now, let's see, we, we're going to have a couple of people moderating. Um, I'm going to ask Mr. Larson and Ms. Legate to try to monitor the chat. And that's where you want to put in your messages or chats. Hey, Chris. Yes. Can I say really quick to the parents that are here, I know that it's a pain to redo that registration paperwork every year. And a lot of parents, especially if they're coming from Johnson in, within Brevard Public Schools, they know that it just rolls up. So they don't really think to go. But remember that a lot of times if you change your email address or your cell phone number, or maybe you get a new extension at work, it's huge that you update that information for us. Because if something happens with your child, we need to try and find you and we have to print out your demographics for EMS. And if that information's wrong, it takes us a lot longer to get a hold of you than, than if we had just had the correct information to begin with. And we've run into that a couple of times this year. So please make sure that you redo that every year because we need that updated contact information in case of emergency. All right, thank you, Ms. Legate. And I've got a couple. I forgot to say, parents, you can decide who you wanna send your message to. In the chat, you can um, send it to one of the co-hosts and we'll be monitoring that. I've got a couple of to me, so I'm gonna start. Um, and Ms. Polis, I'm gonna ask you to answer these because I've got two from with questions about Cambridge. One is if a stu if student applied for Cambridge, when will they find out if they are accepted? And I am already in the AVID program. Well, let's start with that one. Ms. Polis, that one's yours. When will they find out? The time, I'm so sorry. I don't have the timeline right in front of me. I thought we posted the timeline on the site with everything else. So the application deadline is February 26, which is this Friday. And then usually it's a few weeks they give us to review and to give you information, letting you know if, um, that we've received your application, that we are offering you a seat, then you have time to commit to that seat. And I, the timeline is up there on the site. I'm sorry, I don't have that date. Let me look and see if I can find it. If you can't, Mr. Hankel. It was on the um, site with everything. Yeah, there we go, there we go. Perfect. So, um, that's West, that's especially schools. Let's go scroll down, it's, I think it's, that's okay, that's it. All right. So the um, application closes Friday and then March 12th is the lottery, but we do not do a lottery for um, Cambridge. So Cambridge, is this the same one for Cambridge, Mr. Hinkle? Yes. 
Hamish doesn't have a separate one. Okay, it is okay. Last year it was a little bit different. So um, we notify you between March 22nd and March 26th, we offer you a seat. And then you have to then accept or decline your seat by April 9th. So you have till April 9th to let us know if you want that seat. And then there is a whole nother window that opens. So if, if um, you know somebody who's missed out and has not um, applied and, they, and they're panicked about it, tell them that it's fine, that there's another window that opens in April 12th and it goes through, through the summer. So it's up until two weeks prior to school starting that that window opens back up. And then we let them know as soon as we review it, we try to let people know on that wait list. Does that answer it? Sorry, I didn't have that in front of me. No, I, I didn't point that out. It, it is on that, um, that website under academics that is there. And I would highly encourage you to apply early and get that set because we are already starting the process of planning for next year and what classes students will be taking, whether it's in getting recommendations from the teachers. Um, so I would highly recommend that we get that done early. Um, Ms. Armstrong, I think yours was next. I've got a question. Um, did that, I hope that answered your question, uh, Carlos Barter on that one. From Landon M, if I'm already in the AVID program at Central, do I have to reapply to get into AVID at EG? And that is all you, Ms. Armstrong. Okay, so our process does require a much less involved, uh, it's not really an application, we call it a recommitment form that you give us your personal information, just um, contact information is what that is. And uh, a parent signs it, the student signs it. And then we have you sit for an interview just so that we can, an interview is kind of a, um, a, a word that sometimes causes a little stress. So we'll just call it a conversation interview where we sit down with you and just answer questions that you might have and talk about AVID here at O'Galley High School, just to try to get you started um, a little bit earlier than others and get all of that information out there for you. So the short answer is yes, but it's not a long involved um, application process. It's a renewal process. All right. Thank you, Ms. Armstrong. I'm just working my way down. Uh, from the Ladd family, uh, your son was in Cambridge at Johnson. He's at BBS. And I guess my question to you about the deadlines and everything, if the Ladd family, if you are zoned for O'Galley, you can go to the zoned school kind of application for Cambridge, and you can do that literally in a minute and be done with that. It's just putting in the name, the student ID, which you have. And again, this is if you are zoned. It, it gets a lot more complicated if you're not zoned, but there is the second window um, that was in the timeline. Let me pull that back up, the second window. And we are happy to take kids in the second window on the wait list because more than likely we'll have room. That starts April 12th. But I know you wanna know as soon as possible so again, if you are zoned, super easy, go to the zoned application. And like I said, you'll be done in a minute. Very good. Does anybody out there in getting, is anybody of my co-host getting any chats directly to you that would be good for everybody? I've got another one. Let's see, I am an e-learner at Johnson Middle School. How will I obtain the course elective request with the QR code? Then I just complete the Google form. Yes, that is correct. And it should be in that 
first video, the incoming ninth graders and new students, click here for the orientation video. There's a 20, 25 second buffer, Carlos Barter, in that you need to get through. Uh, be a little patient with me as I made it with the new uh, platform that I was using. But I walk you through the, walks you through the, um, sorry, walks you through the PowerPoint. And the last slide is the QR code. And you could probably pause it and just take a picture from your camera. Or we took over a lot of uh, the forms uh, to Johnson. I will ask Miss Tracy over there to post that on their web page, and I will see if I can get that posted on ours as well on this uh, one page that we have going. I hope that helps. If not, put it in the chat. All right, Landon M, I'm a little confused. Do we fill out the form under where we are zoned for electives or do I fill this out in school? So the elective choices, I think I walked through, it's gonna be the QR code. And the zoned one is if you want to, if you do the QR code and put that you wanna be in aviation, that will be one of your choices. If you apply for it through the programs piece on our webpage for the zone kids, that will give you a priority that you want to do aviation or that you want to do the Cambridge or health and wellness. That is a better way. If it doesn't matter you matter to you or the student, then you can just do the QR code. But if yeah, I really, really, really want to be in aviation, I really want to be in health and wellness, I would highly recommend that you do the zoned student um, survey. Are all of these messages coming to me? <laughs> We've got another question. When is the deadline for registration? I'm going to assume here that the registration is the forms that the 12 or 13 forms, sorry about that number, that you have to fill out. Uh, we would love to have those back by the end of March so we can start processing those and organizing those. I'm hoping that's the question that you asked. And I think Miss uh, Dana Murphy is saying they were passed out today for electives. Good, you got that, brought that home. Somebody brought it home. Again, our instructional handbook would have all of those um, courses to give you a little bit of a preview as to what they are all about. But where can the kids hand them in? Because I do not have access once I try to do the QR code situation. If you have a computer, I think you should be able to do it from any computer. If, you, if the QR code and the link is on the, um, on the back side of that, if that still doesn't work, send me another email um, and we can make those, or you've got them, maybe we collect them at, uh, at Johnson. Let me see what else we got. Course electives can be submitted before registration forms are turned in, most definitely. Most definitely those forms can, uh, the, it's gonna take you a while to get those registration forms filled out. The course electives we wanna get in as soon as possible. Gotcha. All right. So we got one coming for Ms. Polis. This is from Aaron Elliott. My son is in Cambridge at Johnson and we registered for Cambridge program in January. How do we apply for ACE? Can we still do aviation as well? How do we set up his electives? Ms. Polis, you want to talk a little bit about the answers to some of that? So the, the, did you say ACE? How do we apply to ACE? Yeah, I think they, yeah, they, they're, my son is in Cambridge at Johnson. We registered for the Cambridge program in January, so they already filled that out. How do we apply for ACE? So you registered for the Cambridge program in January. Does that mean you completed the application on the Brevard Public Schools site or our website? I'm, I'm guessing Ms. Polis is that they, you may not know, um, 
Aaron Elliot, Elliot, I guess it is, sorry, that Cambridge is ace. Ace is Cambridge. They're the same thing. And I believe that. So if you did the application in January, either the zoned or the one for non-zoned, we already have that. Your, the teachers will be doing their uh, course recommendations, the teachers for their math, their core academics, math, English, science, and history. Yes, so after you apply, whether it be on the Brevard Public School site or our website, you'll follow that timeline and that timeline will um, allow you or let you know when we will be letting you know if you've um, been accepted. Um, you know, we have to go through all of the applications and look at the various criteria and review it all. And then once we've reviewed all of that, um, then we put our spreadsheet together and then you start getting notified. So it'll be basically right on, on spot with that timeline. Thank you, Ms. Polis. Sorry, I had to unmute. Can you still, and Ms. Polis, this one for you too, can you still do aviation as well? Absolutely, yes. Many of our Cambridge students are in the health and wellness program and the aviation program. So um, they actually go very nicely together. Um, Mr. McGinnis is our coordinator of our aviation program, and he loves that our Cambridge students are involved in the program because our Cambridge students are self-disciplined. They're students who are um, really serious about their academics. So if you've been following anything to do with our aviation program, they, it's an award-winning program. It's a program that has actually made a lot of strides in, in the state of Florida when it comes to um, you know, the aviation field. So um, yes, you absolutely can do both of those programs together. You'll want to make sure that you choose aviation as one of your top picks from that QR code survey. I think we need to address though, that when students want to do dual programs, unless it's the health and wellness and Cambridge together and you're a zone student, um, when what, what history has shown is when you use the Brevard Public School site because you're not zoned for us and you apply for two programs, once you accept one program, you will get an automatic um, email. You'll be able to accept the program. It automatically um, denies your acceptance to the other one. It's just the way the program's set up with the district. So if you just communicate with us that you want to do both programs, um, we, we usually tell you to accept the Cambridge one. Um, and then we will follow up with you and make sure that you are still able to do the other program. It's just, it's been something that has, I'm not sure if they've changed it, but I think it's still that way when it comes to students who apply through the district site um, and are not zoned for a galley. So bear with it, just communicate with us and we'll make sure it happens for you. All right, let me ask my other co-hosts, are you guys, do you have any, um, chats there that are strictly for you or that came to you and not to me no all right parents you've got us right now you got all of us here um questions about the cte programs we've got our we go by land air and sea i like to say we've got our automotive mechanics our marine mechanics and aviation mechanics where they're working on those vehicles all day long our our freshmen in the aviation you'll get halfway they will get halfway through their private pilot ground school uh, they, they'll do the classroom part of it and uh, coach mac is real good about trying to get those kids up in an airplane as a freshman and one on their first flight we have a couple of different um, computer ones. We've got our multimedia does, um, multimedia is a, the Adobe products. Our Microsoft Office is our business software and digital information technology. We have our early childhood care education where we've got a VPK class here. We've got four-year-olds here on campus that are being taught by our high school students and our health and wellness CTE program. 
if you are interested, anything to do with, let me have Coach Barry talk a little bit about the health and wellness program, because that's a very popular one as well. So our, our health and wellness program, um, it, it's a four-year program um, for any kid that comes in that's interested in a health, a wellness, or a fitness field. Um, they start out as their ninth grade year. They take first aid. Um, they get their all their American Red Cross certifications, adult infant CPR, AED, and the first aid certificate. Um, they second semester, they take care and prevention of athletic injuries. Um, the next year, their 10th grade year, they, and they start out with biology. So they come in together as a group um, and they will take the health and wellness class together and their biology together. Um, 10th grade year, they travel and they go to their first health science class, which is health science, um, anatomy and physiology. Um, their junior year, and they go into chemistry. Their junior year, um, they're going to take their second health science class and they're going to take a um, a class called Adolescent Health Issues, and the second semester is an Advanced Health Explorations. Um, it's one of the only honors health classes in the state of Florida. Um, their senior year, which I think is the, the biggest selling point to this um, academy, is they'll go into their, um, their third health science class with um, Ms. McMahon, and they will sit for the CMAA, which would allow them to go work directly into a um, medical office in the front office, um, and the other big, big part of it is they go into internships. Um, if your student's interested in physical therapy, personal training, nursing, whatever it is, um, we sit down and we will work with um, people in the community and put them out into those workforce areas. Um, right now, I've got um, one at a veterinarian. I've got one at a, um, an elderly care center. I've got one at an urgent care um, and physical therapy office. Um, and they go there, they leave school right now with the block schedule, they go either first or fourth block and they spend an hour and a half every day in that program. Um, and if they choose that they don't want to do the internship their senior year, they can also go the um, Eastern Florida track that year to do that. But what um, Ms. McMahon and I have found over the years is that internship is so valuable for them to decide, yes, this is absolutely what I wanna do, or no, yeah, I, I'm not thinking I want to be a nurse, but maybe health sciences for me. Um, and what I know, hearing from parents, that's huge because instead of going to college for two years and then making a decision of, yeah, this is not what I want to do and losing thousands of dollars because you've got to retake some classes or add more, they're finding that out their senior year in high school. Um, the expectations are high for the program um, for Ms. McMahon and myself because it, it's it's hard to go through those programs in college and, and we get them started on that hard work um, at O'Galley. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to um, throw that in the chat. Um, I'm always available by email, phone call. Um, like Ms. Polis said, excuse me, you can absolutely do Cambridge and health and wellness. A majority of my students are Cambridge kids. Um, but don't let that, if you're not a Cambridge kid, don't let that scare you off either. If, you, if you're willing to work hard, you'll, you'll be just fine. All right, thanks Coach Barry. And I think you've piqued somebody's interest. Kayla Riley asks, what classes would you take if I plan to go to college for internal medicine training and medical school? So I'll let uh, Coach Barry talk first and then I'd like uh, Ms. Polis to uh, follow up. So, so within the program, when you start out with first aid and that care and prevention of athletic injuries, it's um, it's anatomy heavy. We, you know, I'm I'm fairly thorough on those classes with with the anatomy and how the body works. Your tenth grade year, when you get with health science one um, with Miss McMahon, it's all anatomy and it is very detailed, very thorough. What we are hearing year after year from our kids that are going on to college is that anatomy is easy to them. They're not having any issues in college anatomy and people, the kids in their classes are looking at them like, how do you already know this? You've basically had two to three years of, of that in class. Um, the medical terminology and stuff that you pick up through those health science classes is another thing. Kids, absolutely, they're coming back going, I didn't, I didn't even have to do anything. I already knew everything. Um, and then they're also coming back and saying how valuable that internship was because there's, there's kids that are in freshman and sophomore year in their college that have not seen anything within that field and they've already spent a year in that field.
I'd like Mr. Larson to talk a little bit about this because I think he is well versed on all of this. Go ahead, Mr. Larson. So, well, the, my, my first response is there's no question that um, any, any student who's interested in the medical field in, in any realm, whether it's veterinary medicine or human medicine, um, it, it does fold in nicely with Cambridge, although I'm really glad Coach Barry said, even if you're not a Cambridge student, if as long as you're willing to work hard, apply and pursue it, because either way, we, we think you could be successful. Um, in terms of additional courses that that student is specifically asking, um, I think between the, the rigor of Cambridge courses and the rigor of the health and wellness courses, that alone is going to be excellent pre-med, pre-med, um, you know, because your major in college would be some kind of pre-med uh, major, um, whether it's biology or chemistry or uh, something related to those. So I'm, I'm hoping that that answers your question. Think of it this way. The training that you need during high school is to be able to learn how to handle really rigorous, challenging coursework. Because when you then pursue the undergraduate pre-medical coursework that's required, and to get yourself positioned for med school, it's rigor is the key. Being able to survive really challenging, stressful courses and knowing and, and learning the skills to, to manage your time and navigate those stressors. So hopefully that helps answer your question. All right, thank you, Mr. Larson. <clears throat> you mentioned a key word there that ties right in with uh, for Miss Armstrong and Avid, the word rigor. Take it away. <laughs> so I was, I was definitely thinking the same thing. Um, Avid is all about uh, college and career readiness. And we know what's going to get us there is that level of rigor that each and every one can handle. Um, so Avid is a great um, partnership with any of these programs because it, AVID is an elective, but it's an academic elective. And so we want to help every student who's willing to work hard as well to take AVID, especially that ninth grade year, because when you take it in, AV, in ninth grade, it counts for that career research credit. And it's an excellent transition into this big world of high school um, because you're in with a class that's going to support all those needs, all those goals, all those, I'm not sure what I'm doing right now in ninth grade that we all feel. And we're going to make sure that um, you have what you need physically to be successful and emotionally to be successful. And so we're there for academic support. We're there for we work on organizational skills and time management and self-management, which is oh so important. Um, we, in a normal year, we would have the opportunity to take you on college field trips. We partner up with Cambridge and get to go see different colleges so that when you are a senior in high school, even though that seems like it's a long way off, it'll be here before you know it. And we want you to actually walk on these college campuses so that you get a feel for what, what is a good fit for me in my future after high school? Um, we bring in tutors twice a week and we do tutorials. Now, my new friend Landon from Central, he's already knows about the world of tutorials. Um, it is happening in high school as well, high school AVID, but that is there for that academic support. So we want you to take that rigor um, and we want to make sure that we're supporting you and helping you to be successful in those classes. So we're all about being more successful in high school, and, but really being ready for that success at the next level uh, so that when you get to college level, you are ready for it and you're successful when you get there. So I hope that fills in some of that for you. Thank you, Ms. Armstrong. It sure does. I know that when I pop in on uh, Ms. Armstrong's AVID classes, if it's 10th or 11th or the 11th grade classes that I'm in for AVID, I am think about what they're doing in 11th and 12th grade. They're preparing 
along with the tutorials that they do, they're preparing for the SAT, ACT. So they're doing prep work for that. I see them working on their admissions essays to colleges, their applications for college. I see them working on their scholarship applications in the AVID class. So that's all going on. It's a different, a different uh, curriculum for every grade level tailored for what's going on at that grade level, preparing them for college. All right, let's see, where do you sign up for electives if you did not get the QR code? That's from Kaylee, or Kayla, sorry. That's a great question, Kayla. What, um, we will post that on that academics page. I've already made a note that we are gonna post that on our page. And if it's at Johnson, uh, we'll get it posted there. I know Miss Tracy has it and should have sent it out in a focus email to you guys. So take a look there, it could be there. Um, otherwise we'll have it on our page. And I believe um, Miss Thomas at Central and Miss Ferreira at Hoover have it as well. So the that QR code is coming and there's paper copies at Johnson. If you didn't get it, um, see Miss Tracy over there. Anything else? Let's see, who did I leave out? We got heard from everybody here. Now is your time, another chance here. Everybody that's out there, any questions that you can think of? You've got us as your audience. Well, let me just uh, remind, let me think what else. For ninth graders, what you're gonna take, um, those kids, again, we're, we're planning on the whole thing of being full-time in school, having a seven period day, not being on block. We are looking to have anchor hour. If you've had kids come through here before, you know what anchor hour is. Anchor hour is almost an hour in the middle of the day for students to start their homework, get some help from their home on their homework from a teacher, go to a class to finish a test, uh, to get together with a, a, a friend to study for a test. Oh, and by the way, it's time for them to have lunch as well. But please notice what I put first is the academic help or being part of a club. When we have club meetings, they will happen during anchor hour. Um, so we've got, we hope to have anchor hour back. We hope to have a seven period day back. So you will be taking math, English, science, history. And number five would be that career research or AVID. So that means you've got two electives to take and we will be choosing those from that uh, the QR code, that survey. And again, if we don't get it, we'll put it up on our webpage under the academics. Mr. Hankel, can I add one thing to that? Yes, please. So um, with respect to ninth graders typ typically needing to uh, take either the career research and decision-making or AVID, there are, uh, I, I would, I would say that there's a substantial number of students who come in to O'Galley that are interested in, in a variety of programs simultaneously. And one strategy that many employ to, to make room in their schedule for all the different programs they might wanna participate in is to do the career research class online through Florida Virtual School before they even get to O'Galley. It's something they can do during middle school they can do it during the summer prior to entering O'Galley. I'm thinking in particular kids who want to do Cambridge Health and Wellness, and they are in orchestra and want to be in that a couple periods a day. Eventually, just the time crunch gets to be too much. So there, there are little strategies they can pursue to kind of alleviate that crunch. Thank you, Mr. Larson. That is a, that is a great tip. A lot of our students will also do later on, not this summer, you don't have to do it this summer, is, is the HOPE Online is, is another one. If you are getting time crunched, you're doing, doing AVID and you're doing uh, Cambridge at some point in time or health and wellness, like Mr. Larson said, there aren't enough periods in a day to get all of those classes. So we've had kids that will do, um, they may even do an academic class as an elective over the summer. All right, I've taken up 
a lot of time here and I will stay as long as you guys have questions. Um, anybody else out there that is in our little Q&A session? It is being recorded, so we will post this as well along with the QR code on our uh, academic page. I'll stick around a little longer. Um, thank you all for showing up, all of our parents and guests and students. Um, if my co-host, if you need to leave, I will stick around. I think, wait, let's see, wait, how do we sign up a child? Now they start coming in. You guys almost got out of here. Mm -hmm. I will sign our child up for summer class, such as career research. All right, how do we go about doing career research over the summer, Mr. Larson? All right, simplest way, uh, you can email me if you want screenshots or specifics, but it's simply go to any of your favorite search engine. I use Google usually, um, but it can be any search engine and type in the four letters, F-L-V-S. That will get you to Florida Virtual School. It'll be the first link that pops up almost uh, certainly and click on that. And it's a pretty intuitive platform. You create an account just like you would with anything else, a Spotify or any of the social media stuff. Uh, you select your courses. Um, the only challenge for someone who's still in middle school is that uh, since you're in middle school, but hoping to take a high school credit course, you need to make sure you communicate with the middle school counselor because they have to go in and approve the course on their Florida Virtual School dashboard. Uh, and middle school counselors don't often get requests for high school level uh, courses online. And so sometimes they're not checking their dashboard on a daily basis. So you might wanna just give them a heads up that you've requested a course, whether it's HOPE, career research and decision-making or anything else. All right, thank you, Mr. Larson. Uh, Mr. Armstrong, I think there are a couple of questions for you in the chat. Do you see them? Do you want me to address it or type it? Nope, you go ahead and talk to them. So the basic difference in career research and AVID is that um, in AVID, we do career research, we do college research, and we do all of the AVID curriculum where we are working on uh, a plethora of things, including organization and time management, where uh, I said college research, career research. We work on writing skills because we know that you when you're a senior, you have to write an amazing college admissions essay. So the writing lessons that we do support what's happening in your English classes. We work on critical thinking and problem solving activities. Um, we do research in the media center. So there's a lot of other pieces to the AVID curriculum on top of that career research piece. The other thing I see in this question is the applications. Um, I physically will be going to Johnson next week and I know today Mr. Hinkle had paper copies of the applications and those will be in the media, uh, in the guidance office for people who are not currently in AVID. If you are currently in AVID at Johnson, at Central, at Stone, at any of the middle schools that have AVID, it is that recommitment application. And um, I will email it to you if you want to type in your email. I will send it to your AVID coordinator. I will drop off hard copies at your school, your current schools. So we will get you what you need. It will also be on our webpage as soon as we get off this and I put it on there. <laughs> so we, we will get you whatever you need in terms of getting signed up for whatever program so that you are excited and ready to go when it's time to be in our galley high school commodore so i hope that helps yeah and i'd just like to add that's uh, miss armstrong sorry that the difference between avid and career research they both check the box that brevard county has that you either have to have career research, career research or the ninth grade avid they do delve into career research but AVID goes so much farther beyond that. 
they're giving you the support for the rigorous classes. I can't stress that enough with the tutorials that they do. It will prepare the students for the rigorous classes they're gonna have at college. They're gonna learn how to study on their own or in a group, more importantly, how do I get a group of kids that I've got in the same class? Because we can't just go see the professor whenever. They aren't gonna have anchor out. How are we gonna do that? How are we gonna manage that? And that is what you will learn in the four years of Abbott. I can't stress enough, the four years is such a benefit for our students getting to post-secondary and beyond. Yes, thank you for that. So I had a couple of questions asked of me. Okay. Okay, so the first one, they were asking where the timeline is located, Mr. Hinkle. So I don't know if it is on the actual front page still, or was it moved to that academic page? It uh, let me share my screen and I can show them at least one spot. Okay. And the timeline is right here. Please click here to view the application acceptance timeline. Perfect. And so that's one spot. And I believe this is going to take me back to our homepage. And here's all of that information again for the zone school, non-zone teacher recommendation. And here again is the timeline. So on our front page and- And ours was the purple and yeah, it's secondary goals. Come down here, we can check on it. Secondary school, so that's us, excluding Edgewood, so not Edgewood and West Shore, so this is us. Renew and renewal, and again, if, if February 26th is for the, the new ones, we do have the wait list window, so don't panic. We like to get as many as we can done in this window. Um, we take quite a high percentage of students that want to be in Cambridge, into Cambridge. Yes. So, yeah. And then I had another question. The other question was um, about if you if I get accepted into Cambridge, how many electives do I get to choose? So what happens in Cambridge is your ninth grade year, you will take a preparatory curriculum, Cambridge preparatory classes, pre-ACE they're called. So you'll have your four academics, your English, your math, your science and your social studies in Cambridge, or you, you could choose honors level. So say you're stronger in the maths and sciences and you wanna take your Cambridge math and science. You may, world history, your social studies may not be something that you might wanna take Cambridge and you might wanna take that at the honors level versus pre-ACE. So we will work with you on that um, and make sure that your academics are where they need to be, your four academics. As far as your electives, as everybody's been talking about, the career research is one of the required courses for ninth graders. So that will be one that you'll have to take if you haven't already completed it before entering O'Galley. So it'll either be AVID or career research, your four academics, and then you'll have a choice of two others. So usually we have students who are very involved in the music or the fine arts program, and they wanna take two of those. So that will work out usually for you um, if you want to do that. We also, a lot of students, ninth grade year is the year that you're kind of trying things. So you can maybe take a CTE program, take one of the digital media classes or something like that. Um, so you basically ha should have about two slots open, maybe even three, depending on the career research or the AVID. I hope that answers it. Yeah, thank you, Ms. Polis. So that's not, we haven't talked a lot about the CTE. I've got a couple of you left here. Uh, our CTE programs, every single CTE program, those students, if they complete the three years, will walk out of O'Galley High School with an industry certification. Coach Barry mentioned the ones that we have for health and wellness. For um, the multimedia, it, it's Adobe products, uh, industry certifications. I've got a daughter here in 10th grade, and she was in his class, and she is uh, certified in Photoshop. 
We've got kids that are in childcare and they're getting a four, I think three or four industry certifications in the field of childcare in BPK. Um, we've got all of our, CT, our, our, our land, air and sea. Uh, I know our marine mechanics, they're getting industry certifications in different fields there with like say Evan Rood or product mercury. Our um, automotive is, um, what is it? What am I thinking of? They're, they're the Florida automotive. Go ahead, Larson. You, I see you got it. Uh, both FADA, the Florida uh, Automobile Dealers Association certifications, but they are also doing ASE, the Automotive Service Excellence, and there's a whole bunch of levels there. Thank you, Rich. All right, uh, somebody asked, when, is it, when do we have to have the registration paperwork turned in? We, we would love to have it by the end of March. Uh, we won't get them all, but hopefully we get a bulk of it in by then. We, I think, anybody else have any questions in their private chat or in, their, in the chat just to them? I had one other that might be useful for anybody else who's still with us, and that is uh, for Florida Virtual School, um, is there, is, is it flexible in terms of start dates? And the answer is 100%. It's actually part of uh, the process of setting up the account and requesting a course is choosing the start date. So it could be as soon as tomorrow, or it could be you can postpone the start date till May. Sorry, I was muted. Uh, Ms. Yes, I was muted. Can you tell a little bit about the AVID application? What's involved there? I, I saw it this morning. It's not too bad. Yeah, the, the AVID application, it's fairly short. There's uh, um, contact information on the first page. There's a couple of questions that simply ask, why do you want to be in O'Galley High School AVID? Uh, there's a little part where you can get a creative and tell us a little bit about you and your goals. And then the last page is um, a teacher recommendation. It's one of your academic teachers who can speak on um, your work ethic as a student, um, fairly straightforward. Uh, there's a hard copy. As I said, it, it'll be in the guidance offices in the middle schools. It'll also be online. If you're currently in AVID, it's a recommitment form. It's not a, it's not a, a long reapplication. It's just a recommitment that you want to stay in and there's a couple of questions on that about why do you want to continue with AVID? What does it mean for you and how does it connect with your goals? And we just want to get to know you a little bit more and see, you know, what you're thinking, what you're feeling and, and how that applies to uh, you being a student here at O'Galley and how we can help you move forward. So the application, if it's a paper copy, you can give it to your AVID teacher and they can put it in the courier and get it to me, or you can drop it off at the O'Galley office and they'll get it to us. Um, if it's an email copy, um, if you have access to a printer, you can print it, um, scan it and send it back or print it and drop it off. Or um, if you have access to, um, being able to do a fillable PDF, we could get it to you that way and you could send it back electronically. So we wanna work with you, uh, make it as easy as possible. I wanna to touch on the teacher recommendation like Betsy just, or Mrs. Armstrong just said. Um, so if you are a student applying for the Cambridge program and you attend Johnson Middle School, you do not need to do a teacher recommendation. You don't need to hand those forms to your teachers. We are gonna have your teachers um, complete a spreadsheet for us and they will give us recommendations that way. So don't worry about printing those forms and handing them to the teachers. If you do attend another public school, Central, Delora, Hoover, you will need to print the forms off of our front page website where it says teacher recommendation and hand those to um, your teachers. It, it, they can send them back to us through the school courier 
If you are a student who is not zoned for us and you need to send a teacher recommendation to a, to a teacher, part of the district site's application is an electronic version of that. So you don't have to do anything with any paper copies if you're not zoned for us. Um, those can be um, just automatically sent through your application on the public site. So I hope that helps. All right, uh, Ms. Armstrong, you got another question here. And I think you said it before, but just remind us, where are we gonna find the online application for AVID for the new people? The online application is going to be at the AVID link that Mr. Hinkle showed earlier. Um, when you click on the link, the information about O'Galley High School AVID is there and a link to the actual application. The other thing you can do is some people are putting their email in the chat box right now. If you want to add it in the chat box, I'm getting it. And I will, as soon as we get off, email you the application and you'll have it tonight. All right. Thank you, Ms. Armstrong. All right. I hope we've answered all your questions. I think we have. Um, you know how the Brevard School emails work. It is our last name dot our first name at Brevard Schools, and that's plural dot org. If you send it to Hinkle dot Chris, I will not get it because it is Hinkle dot Christopher. And I think everybody else is as it shows. Polis, Miss Polis's last name is P O U L O S dot Kathy with a C at brevardschools.org. But everybody else, if you see our videos, you see how to get a hold of us. We would be happy to chat with you, either emails or uh, <clears throat> a little more live in person over the phone. So if there aren't any more questions, or nope, they got two more messages. Good. There's Mr. Larson's. <coughs> uh there's and okay so our teachers our coordinators are putting in their emails on the chat thank you for being smart about that and again i'll stick around for a little bit uh my co-host miss larson thank you miss armstrong miss barry and miss polis thank you so much for being here and helping me out with this uh endeavor again i wish it were live and hopefully we will be able to see all of these uh ninth graders and their parents sometime soon before their ninth grade year here on campus all right so you guys need closer to here. I'll stick around a little bit thank you everybody thank you Again, people that um, I see our guests are leaving, uh, Thomas, Aaron, or Kayla, if you have any questions for me, I can unmute you. I'd be happy, but it looks like we're good. Thank you, coach. All right. Hopefully this isn't, there we go. Thank you, Aaron Ellett. I hope we answered all your questions. Have a good night. Ms. Polis, Ms. Barry, Ms. Armstrong, thank you so much. I'm gonna go ahead and end this meeting. I'll stop the recording and you guys have a good one. Thank you. Thank right. you for doing it. You bet, thank you, bye-bye. You too, bye guys. Bye, Beth. have a good night. You too.